is my best friend. I have searched this world over, and I've seen uh, many, many people. Your mom and your dad will be there close. Your wife, your kids will be there close for you. But there ain't nobody will be there with you like the love of Jesus Christ. When he, there is nothing can compare to that. There is nothing can compare to the feeling that you feel when you get saved and know that he, you got that no-so salvation and know that he's right there with you. Um, y'all pray for me this morning. The, the devil has, has tried to fight and he's tried to come against and he's tried to tell me I don't need to be behind the pulpit and he's tried to many things, what the devil likes to do. But you know what? The devil's stupid in a lot of ways. He is so stupid. When he tries to bring a Christian down, sometimes when he was trying to pull me down, he actually brought me a message. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't smart as he wants uh, you know but the devil uh, brother Mark I'm going to tell you something brother <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning you, <laughs> you want me to be still and I don't know that that's going to happen you're going to be moving back there <laughs> alright <laughs> alright brother Donnie I tell you what when the Holy Ghost gets a hold I, there ain't nothing <laughs> there ain't no grave going to hold this body down the only thing you better look out for is them clods coming out. If I'm in the ground, you might get hit by one. Because this body's going up. And, and what the message was today is, is facing the worldly giants. The giants in our life that we have to face on a daily basis through this world. You know, it's, you can believe however you want to. I don't care if you're Republican, if you're Democrat. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to put in the man of God. That's who I'm going to put in. And you know what? It, the, the nations you talked, sister, this morning, so wonderful in the lesson that people are turning away from God. People are, are look at these days and time. You've got one man is standing up for God. Rather, he, he may be a true born child of God. At least the man is standing. And that's who they're trying to come against right now. It don't matter who it is, if they put somebody in office and they're standing up for the glory of God, if it, it don't matter who, if they're Democrat, Rep they're going to try to pull them down and they're going to try to pull them out of office because that, they don't want nothing to do with what's right in America right now. And, you know, the homosexuality, they're trying to put that in and eventually they're going to try to put it in all the church and that's what they're going to use to try to come against the church. But you know what? We need to be praying for these people. I, I wish the church was full of them so maybe they'd get their heart right with God. I ain't going to condemn them for what... They're, I'm going to preach the Word, what it says, and He said that it is an abomination is what He says. But yet they try to put people like that in the, behind the pulpit. You know, it's like changing this Bible. They try to change the Bible and they try to put different words. They try to come out with new versions and everything. He said that he'll make this as simple as a child to understand. He will make this clear to you. But you've got to be prayed up and you've got to let the Holy Spirit feed you as you're reading this word. Glory. Hallelujah. Every day we come in contact with giants. Every day we have a source to try to come against us. We have, we have things kind of come against our jobs. Things against our families. We try to have things to try to pull us down, to tell us we're not saved, to tell us we can't stand up here and preach, to tell us what God has called us to do. You're going to have giants and things to try to come against you and try to bring you down. Everybody has a giant in their life. Somebody may have been just told that they have an incurable disease or a cancer or something. Or you've gone through a sickness. Brother David, you was out last week. That you know you're going to face these giants in your life, and you was talking about your sickness. And then I was, it was a couple of weeks ago I was sick. It seems like everybody's getting sick. You're going to face these giants, but he said, "By my stripes, you are what? Woo, glory, hallelujah! You are healed." <laughs> are we ready to face these giants? Because they're going to come at us stronger now than ever. They're coming against the Christian people. They're coming against anything that stands for God. That's why they're trying to attack America. 
is because there is a few Christian. This is called Christian America. The, the other nations they hate God. They hate Christ. They're going to try to attack. Well, you know what, America, they're coming against God as well. America, rather they blow us up or not, America is destroying itself inside. It is a canker mess what we're living in today. And they're going to wind up destroying. So grab your stones and hold on. Because we're going to need to face those giants coming against us. Um, if you would, and this is something that just God had brought. To, like I said, that the devil tried to bring me down. And he tried to bring his... The devil tried to send his Goliath toward me. Whoo, glory. And that's when he gave me this message. If you would, 1 Samuel 17. David and Goliath. This is a very good story that, that we can relate back on even as a small child. But I want to correct some things that I heard as a small child, and I'm going to read it for word for word, what it says right here in the old KJV. 17, starting in verse 4. Whew, glory. Whew, I feel the Holy God. I tell you what, you are the church. You are, the, you are what brings the Holy Spirit here. You are what, you, you're what puts this in perspective. It ain't the preacher that stands up here. Brother Doug, he can stand up here and preach his heart out. And preach, but you are the church. As, as my dad said before, Every coon dog, every, every rabbit dog, they need a little encouragement once in a while. A good amen once in a while. I know Brother Doug would like to hear that. Brother David sitting back there. Pastor, I know you'd like to hear a good amen once in a while. Give, a, give some encouragement because I'm going to tell you something. This is the quietest world we're ever going to live in here. When we get over there in the glory, we're going to be shouting and praising. Why not do it down here? We do it at ball games. We do it when we go to all these races and everything else. But you know what? Give him some praise. Lift him up here in the church that he brought you out of the devil's hell, that he saved your soul. And that you know ain't no ball game or nothing can bring you that, that, that can save your soul. That ain't nothing but the devil trying to something to keep you out of church from serving him. But yet we give that praise. But when we're in the house of God, the man that's died on that tree for us has saved our soul and we can't even give him a little praise and glory and honor. Oh, hallelujah, I'm going to praise him while I'm down here. I don't care if I'm sitting at a table and the anointing of the Holy Ghost touches me while I'm praying over my meal. Everybody in the world is going to hear about it because I'm going to let the, let the Holy Ghost feed me. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Oh, glory. Mm, I feel a spirit here. Starting in verse 4, chapter 17. And there went out a champion out in the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose weight was six cubits in a span, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat, was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. I ain't going to get all into what that, I just wanted to start with that, is how big this man was, nearly 10 foot tall. Great big giant of a man. Whoo, glory. I couldn't even imagine that. These walls, I think, on the side walls may be 8 foot tall just by looking at it. He's a couple feet taller than that. That's a big, big man. And all this humongous armor on. Scary looking, I guarantee. He says uh, over top of everybody else, probably a whole person taller than everybody else. You know when they come up to you and they tell you, and, and not the same, so I, everybody has their own different scenarios, the different things that's come against them in their life, the different giants. But you ever been faced with something and you just feel that smack in your face, the blood pressure running through your body, that you've got a scared feeling, you're nervous, you're worried. That giant is just coming at you and you're nervous. Do you turn around and run from it? Do you worry about it and fret over it? Do you, do, you get, do you run away? Or do you say, God, I need your help right now. 
Help is on the way. Glory, hallelujah. He is going to be right there, but you've got to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He is going to come at you at what you are scared of the most. And he come at little David. Whew. And it says in, in uh, 24, verse 24, same chapter. And all the men of Israel, when they saw this man, they fled from him. And they were sore afraid. All the men in Israel, they were scared of this one man. And then he brought his armies with him. Whew. Glory. You know what? It don't matter what the devil tries to throw at you. A lot of people, as I said last week, we don't understand. I had a lady call me that she didn't understand why she was going through the things she did. And I didn't understand why. But God is going to reveal it if you will hold on and put on that armor of God, not of man. That's what, the, that's what happened here. Let's keep reading. Elib's anger was kindled in uh, verse 28. Elib's anger, anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why comest thou hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thy heart. And on down in 32. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou but a youth. So already you've got two people, his brother and Saul, are saying, you are no match, David. You're just a little fella. You are no match for this guy. His brother got mad and, what, what are you even doing here? How does that make David feel? That's Satan trying to come against him. That's just like well, the things that in our lives we can, we can use this. God has used these scenarios. Go back to the Old Testament. A lot of people say just read the New Testament. That Old Testament right there, glory. I still like to read it just as much as anything. He has got reason that we can relate our lives to right here. Could you only imagine, David? you got to have some encouragement. As I've already said, Brother David, it's good to hear an amen once in a while to know that, know that people still listening to you. Listen to the Lord. But when you got people that is negative and trying to throw you down, just like Facebook, a lot of people look at that Facebook or Instagram or whatever you call all that stuff. They look at that and it brings them down. They'll put people put posts on there that, that are negative all the time. Nothing's positive. You watch the news and everything's negative, 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 negative. That's what this world strives off of. That's what the devil's putting out there and putting it in your mind. As I said last week, that, the, that somebody didn't speak to you in church and the devil will start putting these things in your mind. Don't listen to him. I, start, I had the same, I'm still human flesh, church. Same deal yesterday. I had the same thing happen to me. And I started something dwelling on, it just kind of made me mad. And the more I thought about it, the madder I got. You ever do that? Somebody at work ever make you mad or somebody in your family ever make you mad and you just want to bowl on it? Well, I'd like to get a hold of them, just wring her neck, and punch him right in the face. Hey, we are human. Call it, it is what it is. As long as we're here on this earth, we're going we to have these thoughts. But I got thinking about that and I said, God, there ain't no sense in that. They, I forgive me for listening to the devil that long, long enough to get that on my mind and get dwelling on it. Forgive me for that. I had done got off on track of anything else going on and just thinking about this one scenario. And it wasn't even nothing. I blowed it out of proportion. I let the, let the devil in that much. Sister, as you was talking this morning, that's all it takes, just that much. And I done spent 45 minutes to an hour dwelling on this same situation. How silly. I could have been doing something else. I've been thinking about something else I've been doing that day, but nope, I was dwelling on it. 
Shame on me. I'm still human. But they, they've come against David. I'm going to try to hurry up. I know we're getting, we're going to get on overtime. I'm going to go through this. But David, they try to pull, the, pull him down and say these things to him. He's already probably scared to death, but he know he's fighting for his God. He's fighting and he's going out to face this man and you've got the devil trying to pull him down through even people we love. People y'all love that try to pull you down, they say things to you to discourage you and they don't even realize it, but the devil will use that against them to, to try to bring you down and they don't, they don't, nobody knows or means to. But it just happens. In verse 38, they try, this is man trying to do things for God. A lot of times we've got God's hands tied behind his back and won't allow him to do what he needs to do in our lives. God's got a purpose for each and every one of you, Brother Brandon. He's got a, he's got a purpose to put us here for a, a just like you, uh, you're such a blessing just hearing that prayer this morning. Oh, hallelujah. God has got a purpose for everybody here. Whether it's a witness or, or whatever it may, may be, singing or, or playing an instrument or, or going out and uh, you may lead somebody to the Lord. You may be the only Bible that person ever led. Let God do what He needs to do in your life, Sister Linda. Did he, don't tie His hands. Don't let man try to tell you what to do or you tell God what to do. Let Him do it. But that's what happened here that Saul, they was trying to put on all this armor. They was trying to put on everything that they thought he needed to face this giant. <laughs> All he needed was, <laughs> woo, glory, hallelujah. All he needed was the man. That's all he needed. And he said, Saul put on the armor and put on the brass upon his head. And he armed the coat and mail, verse 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor and essayed to go. For he, he had not proved it. Man, he couldn't, he couldn't wear it. It was too big for him. And, he, and David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. He got rid of it. I don't need your stuff. I don't need man's ways of telling me I need God's way. God's the one that put me here, and He's the one that put each and every one of you here this morning. He's the one that gave you that purpose to go out and face those giants. To go out and witness for God. And he says here in verse 40. Whoo, glory. And he took his staff in his hand and chose them five stones. Five smooth stones. Whew, glory. Hallelujah. I've seen this. Oh, the brother deacon at church, he, he brought this up before Brother Gary. As he went to grab them stones. Five. J. E. S. U. Yes, he's got Jesus with him as he picked those stones up. He done exactly what he needed, but he only needed that one, but he grabbed five. I believe he was spelling his name out as he grabbed those stones. Hallelujah. And he says right here, five smooth stones of the brook, and he put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had led even in the script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew... Near to the Philistine. And the Philistine come and drew near to him. And to David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Why is this giant got all this protection and this little old man? <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Whew. This just builds me up right here. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth, and ruddy and fair and con contents. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with these staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said unto David, Come to me, and I will give the flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. So there the devil was again. This big man is looking down and he is bullying. Any of you ever been bullied in school? Been picked on? I wasn't a whole lot, but I, I've seen a lot of people that, that have been bullied and stuff. He was bullying. 
He bullied this little, and there is, dad has always told me, don't, son, don't you ever, ever make somebody, belittle somebody or make fun of somebody. That is the worst thing in the world you could do. And I agree that there is nothing. Everybody puts their pants on the same way. They put their clothes on the same way. There is nobody, when that time comes, when you, as I said last week, as a tree falls, so shall it lie. What you come in the world, that's what you're going to leave with. Absolutely nothing. Nobody is any better than anybody else. Whew. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> God does. Glory. Hallelujah. And the, he said and he cursed, he cursed and he, he belittled David. And he tried, to, he tried to make him feel so small. And so, but you know, he had a bigger God than him and greater than all those others, Brother Larry. He had something in him that there is no, <laughs> there is no powers of hell that can bring him down. And let's skip over here to 48. I'm not going to read all of this. We're just going to try to hit the highlights of it. Everybody knows this book, but it's good to hear it again. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. Listen to this. And David hasted and ran toward the army. That's what we got to do. We've got to run face first into say when he tries to pull you down. When he tries to when the when he says, hey, you've got cat, the doctor tells you you've got cancer. If the doctor, like I said this morning, Brother David, you, our doctor died on that cross. He ain't died, but he's risen again. He is going to protect you, and there ain't no doctor out there. Mike can tell you what you've got, but we've got a stronger doctor that can fix our problems, that can fix any kind of sickness, any kind of depression we're going through. Maybe we're going through a loneliness or depression or thing. I don't know if any of you's ever faced loneliness or depression. But it's a sickness just as bad as anything else. I've went through loneliness. I've went through depression. I've been depressed. The devil puts things in your mind. He tries, he tries to use that against you. And that is one thing that, that he, there's so many people is going through so many battles. With that, that is another one of those giants. That is another one of the giants that the devil will send towards you. But we'll defeat him in Jesus' name. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face of the earth. Whew. He got it, that stone, because of obedience. He obeyed. He knew. David said back here when he was talking to Saul, he said, Saul, I know. He knew that the man that lived in him, he had done tackled a bear. He had done tackled a lion. And he used both of them because he was a shepherd. Brother Doug is our shepherd here. Pastor David is our shepherd. This is, this is also my home church here. I love this church. Amen. I feel welcome when I come here. But hey, David was a shepherd. And he knowed his God and he believed in his God. And he knew that there wasn't nothing the devil could put in him that he could try to take away. That he was going to try to protect his sheep. Just like Brother Doug, uh, uh, Brother David back there, he, they stand here and they protect their sheep. They're trying to tell you that if you, that if you do wrong and you don't get your heart right with God, you're going to go to hell. Nobody wants to go to hell. We want to protect you from that. But a lost sheep can get away. They can get stranded. That's, an, that's, a, that's another message in itself. They can get away. They can run. But you know what? David was protecting them. He wasn't going to let no lion. He wasn't going to let no bear come against them. He took those and he slew them. He wasn't afraid of no giant either because he knew that the man that helped him do that was going to help him attack that big old giant that's coming in here. Just 
when the things are trying to come in our lives and the devil's trying to tell us your kids will never be saved. Your family members will never be saved. This, this, this sickness that you've been put on, you'll never be healed of it. You'll die of this. Tell that devil, no, you get behind me. Right now in Jesus' name, grab that stone and get ready. Get ready because you get ready to tackle that giant through Jesus' name. And David prevailed into Philistine and also... When I was a small child, I remember reading the storybooks. Said David killed the giant with a slingshot. That ain't what happened. That ain't what happened. Let's read this Bible right here. He took him down with that sling. It gets even better. Any of you like to watch old war movies or action movies or anything? I like to see the action. I like to see the I like to see the stuff go down. I like to see uh, the heroes of it. David was the hero. He done more than take him down with a slingshot. He took, a, he took his own sword. This is right here. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and what? Took his own what? His own sword and drew it out of his sheath and thereof he slew him and cut off his head wherewith. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. We got to do what God says. Do. Turn to Romans 8 37. 8 37. If you don't have this marked in your Bible, I want you to mark this. That's one thing. Uh, the computer technology and everything, it's good. It's good to have a, the iPads and the cell phones. You can look up. It can be good things. But you can't go back and you can't mark in there like you would in the Bible. You can't, I, I go back and I can tell you dates from way back when people preached or had a service or testified. I write it down. You can't do that on your phone. You can't do that on your iPad, but you can in your Bible. And it says right here, I'll hurry up. Nay, in all these things, somebody read that. We are what? Say that again. Say that again, loud. More than conquerors. How do you become more than a conqueror? Through the name of Jesus. David went through that and he, he was more than a conqueror. He could have took that little slingshot and killed him, but no, he took a rascal sword and cut his own head off with his own sword. Hallelujah, that's my God. He makes you more than a copper. He can take that sickness, that pain, those things that the devil is trying to pull you down with and bring you down, and he can make you stand on top of it. Glory, hallelujah, with your sword, and the, or the devil's sword, and say, look, devil, I am more than a conqueror through the name of Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Is that Brother Robert, if you want to come on to the... Get us a song together here. Whew. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing power of the Holy Ghost here this morning. Whew. He said that I will make you more than a conqueror. The devil cannot cross that bloodline. As I said last week, brother, uh, that Job, look at Job, how he had, he had got the, the, the things that he went through. So much that he had to go through. But he made him in the end more than a conqueror. He made everything so much better for him in the end. If we will hold on and do what God is leading us to do. There ain't no doctor can tell us no sickness can bring us down. Glory. Hallelujah. There ain't no grave going to hold our bodies down. Because you're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And if you're willing to live your life, it's a big sacrifice. It's a big sacrifice. It's like I told a boy one time. I said, you have got to be willing to commit. Because when you commit to something, it's just like going to football. 
and I've been learning a lot about sports here lately. My son's playing. Or baseball. You have got to go at it strong. You've got to go at it. You've got to be prepared to face those giants, Brother David. You've got to be prepared to go after the team that you're going against. And you've got to be prepared when the devil is throwing things at you that you've got to be ready. You've got to be on that full armor of God. Not, not man's armor. Not what man can put on you. But what God puts on you. Glory. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit have its way. If anybody needs to come down to this altar today, as everybody stands with every, every head bowed and every eye closed. Glory. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Brother Robert. If those giants in your life have come against you and they're bringing you down, God is going to make you more than a conqueror today. If you will put it in the hands of Him, if you will be willing to put that in God's hands, whoo, hallelujah, glory, be the Lamb of God. I ask you to come down. If you don't want to die and go to hell today because of wanting to, come on, uh, elders of the church, come down and pray. Glory be the Lamb of God. You don't want to go to hell. Oh, hallelujah. You want your life. If you know that you that there is something in you that is not completely right, if you're not 100% right with God, there is nothing that should hold you back today from coming down. There is no husband or no wife or nobody that would hold me back from wanting to meet my Maker. When it comes time, if your heart is not right, I pray that today is the day that you make things right with Him. Whew, glory. And if that giant is in your is coming against you in your life, through your job, through your family, through a sickness, whatever it may be, whatever that giant, God is going to make you more than a conqueror got to keep saying that to yourself. I am more than a conqueror. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You saved by amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. Give me hope. I want to go to heaven. Hell is an awful, awful place. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hell is an awful, awful place. The worst things that we could ever imagine, the things that we're most scared of in life, that's going to be in hell. It's going to be all the, the, the snakes, the spiders, the whatever it may be that you're scared of, that is going to be in hell. But more than anything, those messages that Brother David and Dad and, and Brother Doug and everybody has sent has told you to get your heart right with God. Glory, hallelujah. That's going to be the torment in hell to keep over and over and over to hear that message. Please, if you ain't right, come down. Let these brothers pray for you.